Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael with IDB. Welcome back. And in this video, we are taking a look at iPad OS 16. So let's go ahead, jump in right now and take a look. So we're gonna get things started with the weather app on the iPad. So yes, you heard me correctly. The iPad now finally has a built-in weather application. So now when you click on the widget on your home screen, it now opens up into a dedicated weather application. It only took what, like 16 years of iPad software to finally get this, but I guess better late than never. So I really like the design of this weather application. It looks pretty much the same as when Apple redesigned the weather app in iOS 15 for iPhone, except now we get even more improvements on iOS and iPad OS 16, which includes the ability to see much more detailed breakdowns of all aspects of weather. So for example, I can click here where it says sunset and I can get a detailed graph of where the sun is going to be in the sky throughout different points of the day. You get different information such as first light, sunrise, sunset, and last light. And if you scroll down, you can even see uh, details such as sunrise and sunset averages for each month of the year. Uh, even if you click on rainfall, you can get a detailed graph of all the precipitation in your area. So you get a lot more details now inside the weather app. And overall, I think Apple did a great job implementing this on the iPad. So next up is the files application. So when Apple unveiled iPad OS 16, they talked about how they wanted to make the iPad software support more desktop like features. And they have done that inside the files application, especially. So first up is you can change file extensions. So directly inside the UI where you change the name of various files, you're also able to change the extension and what application it'll open in. So say for example, you can change a .jpg file into a .png file. So it just opens up the iPad files app and lets you do a lot more in terms of extensions. You can also click on the current folder that you're in to see the entire folder size, which is something more like the Mac, which I really like. You also now have navigation buttons on the top left. So you have a backward and forward button. So now if you're in a folder and you navigate all the way back, it's now a lot easier to find your way back into a previous location in files. And when you are viewing a file, we also now have quick actions inside the menu. So if you click here in the top left, as you can see, we have various quick actions. So if you're viewing an image, you have the option to save the image. And if you're viewing a PDF, for example, you'll have the option to lock that PDF with a passcode. So overall, inside the files application, Apple has added a lot more desktop like features and features from the Mac now into the iPad, which people will really appreciate. So now I want to talk about what is probably the biggest and most impressive new feature in iPad OS 16, and it is called Stage Manager. So Stage Manager is exclusive to certain iPads, iPads with the M1 chip. So if you have the latest iPad Air or the latest iPad Pro models, then you're able to take advantage of Stage Manager. So what is this? It's pretty much a multitasking UI, which is in my opinion, a lot better. So you turn on Stage Manager inside of Control Center, and once it's turned on, you're not gonna notice any changes until you open your first application. So if I open one application, as you can see here, you instantly see the change. So first up, it doesn't open in full screen. It opens in a window. Now this window is resizable. You can grab it in the corner and you can resize it to any of the preset options available. You also have on the left-hand side, your recently opened applications, and you can tap on each window to quickly switch between different applications. Now, when you are in each view or each tab, you can actually have up to four windows open in each tab. So in essence, you could be working in four applications and then click on a separate tab on the left-hand side, which also has another four applications. However, I do find that on the smaller iPads, so my 11 inch iPad Pro, and it would be the same for the iPad Air as well, I find that when you have four tabs open, it kind of gets cramped. So I feel like this feature is definitely going to be better on the larger iPad Pro. On my iPad, I feel like Stage Manager works uh, best when you have one or two apps open. Uh, even if you're just using it with one app, I find the ability to have that quick switch feature on the left-hand side really useful as it makes jumping between applications just one tap away. So I feel like it still could be fine-tuned a little bit. It does work pretty well in my opinion. However, I feel like it would work absolutely best on the larger iPad Pro models. 
And also when you're viewing your windows of open applications, you can click on the icon and minimize it, or you can just flick down on the window to completely close it. However, the stage manager feature does not stop at just the iPad because you can now use it on external displays as well. So previously on iPad OS 15, the external display support was very, very limited and a lot of people complained about it. But now if you have an iPad that supports stage manager and you plug it into an external display, you can now have pretty much an extended desktop experience, which makes it a lot more like a computer in my opinion. So this requires an M1 chip because on the iPad you can have four applications open, but also on the desktop you can have a separate four applications open. So eight applications open and running at the same time requires a lot of processing power. And again, that's probably why the stage manager feature requires the M1 processor. When plugged into an external display, it doesn't work exactly the same as the iPad, obviously, because the iPad is a touch screen and your external monitor is not gonna have touch support. So you are going to need at least a mouse. So you can set up a Bluetooth mouse inside of settings, and you can also use the Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro and iPad Air as well. So now I wanna hear what you guys have to say about this, because I know a lot of you iPad users have been wanting external display support for a very long time. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like this feature could have been opened up to more iPads, not just the M1 enabled iPads. Maybe Apple could limit the amount of applications you can have open at the same time, and that way they could open this up to a lot more iPads in the lineup. However, we are still in the beta process, so things could change. In my opinion though, when using Stage Manager, especially with an external display, it still feels a little bit finicky to me. I don't feel like I could be completely productive with this. And if I'm using an external monitor, I'm probably just more likely to plug my Mac into the external display instead of my iPad. However, if the iPad is all you have as your computer, it definitely is nice to have this extended desktop experience that will let you be way more productive than on your small iPad display. However, with all of this being said, I still feel like when the iPad is connected to a display, I feel like the UI is a bit finicky and it's still built for touch first. I feel like Apple could do a little bit more optimization when using a trackpad or a mouse. But all in all, this is a huge improvement from the previous external display support we had on the iPad, which was pretty much none because the iPad screen would just be mirrored onto the external display and you really wouldn't be able to do anything. So this is definitely leaps and bounds ahead of what we had before but tell me in the comments below if this is what you were expecting but also tell me if this is something you believe you can be productive with and can assist you in your workflow so other than the stage manager feature ipad os 16 is a pretty small update and if you don't have an m1 ipad this is probably the smallest ipad os update in a long time there is a slight tweak to the lock screen, so the Face ID icon now disappears after you authenticate with Face ID, and there is a slightly tweaked font for the time and date. But other than that, this is a very small update. So if you don't have an iPad that supports the new stage manager feature, the biggest update for you is going to be the new weather application, and that's pretty much it. So leave a like on this video if you found it interesting or helpful, and again, comment down below telling me your thoughts on everything we discussed in the video today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next time we upload a video. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.